Good afternoon and welcome to Green TV. It's March 19th, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. Joining me to my right here is Cody Bills. So Cody, let's jump into Fire Tip, see how the grains traded here on a Tuesday. As we can see, we had corn for May delivery up eight cents. We had soybeans backing off three and three quarters. Chicago and Kansas City wheat both moving higher today as well, up eight and three quarters in Chicago, up seven cents in Kansas City. If you guys want live quotes over at your home or office, visit us at grainhedge.com. You can take a no obligation demo of the trading platform that we use here on Grain TV. You know, Cody, uh, in general, it seemed like one of the big pieces of news out today was the Chinese canceling beans that were expected to be delivered from South America. Uh, uh, around 2 million metric tons, so that certainly seemed to put a bit of a bid into the soybean market. Once again here though, we were able to close lower on the day, trading off uh, 3 and 3 quarter cents. If we jump in here to a daily May candlestick chart uh, of this soybean contract, you can see here, it does look like the pace of our selling is starting to slow down a little bit here. Uh, certainly this area right around $14 should act to support, uh, but certainly long term it seems kind of bearish right now that we were able to have a pretty strong close uh, below some of that technical area that we were talking about here recently on Green TV. Yeah, and of course, you know, that cancellation out of China, the question is, are they going to just rebook those beans later on in the marketing year out of mm -hmm. Brazil, or are they going to turn to the U.S. to get them immediately? There is talk that the Chinese stocks right now are very tight, right. and because of these delays, and you know, if they need beans now, we're the only game in town we have the ability logistically to get those beans to China right. so there is a, a little bit of a possibility but of course that just wasn't enough to turn us positive on the day let's take a quick look over here at corn and one of the nice things is this is a daily chart uh, we finally were able to get over that 200 day moving average right. be able to get over that about 720 mark uh, we closed very strong uh, we had we closed near the uh, high side of the trading range on the day the question is whether or not we'll be able to hold that uh, as tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's trade continues, right. I think uh, there's a good chance we can, especially when you look at wheat, which we've kind of been trading in tandem here, corn and wheat. Uh, wheat, I think, has a little uh, bit of upside to the 750 level. Uh, you can see here we've been rallying off these lows, and I think there is a possibility to move up toward that 750 level where there's previous uh, support, which will act as that roll reversal, right. possibly turning into resistance. Yeah, certainly, Cody. You know, as you were just saying here, we did have corn and wheat trade in tandem in today's action. Uh, but certainly one thing that a lot of people have been taking note of is that right now we still have that May Chicago wheat contract trading at a discount of about six and a half cents uh, to the May uh, corn contract right now. Certainly some large implications there for feed usage. That's kind of been uh, one balance sheet item that's received a lot of attention here over the past uh, several months in the USDA WASD report. Next Thursday we're going to be getting the quarterly grain stocks report um, and so certainly that's going to be another focus of attention there is feed usage. I know today you kind of dived into uh, what we're seeing in the cash market right now corn versus wheat. Can you kind of share with uh, what, what you found there? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we uh, that we were looking at is really the difference between wheat and corn. And uh, we took the wheat price, we subtracted out the cash corn price. This is on average across the U.S. And what you're seeing here is, uh, is that spread going back to 1998. Mm -hmm. And the areas that I've circled here in red are actually areas during wheat harvest, right around that June-July period uh, when the, the winter wheat is being harvested and you'll notice that's typically when we see wheat discounted to corn. Right. Uh, that's when we see wheat cheaper and, and more of a feed alternative. Um, and, and what you're seeing here is if you look farthest over there to the right and we'll, let's just zoom in on the next uh, the most recent couple of years um, on the farthest to the right you'll see we're actually about 40 between 30 to 40 cents cheaper when we're talking about winter wheat that SRW wheat uh, to corn and I think that right now as we move toward harvest I think if we get closer to harvest when when the, the wheat's coming out of the field there's a very good possibility we could get down to those levels that we observed in 2011 when wheat was uh, was even as much as a dollar uh, discounted to corn uh, one of the things about that though is that you know really if you look from January which is when these stocks were recording from we're recording January to March you'll notice that we continued to see wheat improve uh, in terms of its competitiveness to corn. Right. Uh, it wasn't quite inverted at that point, uh, but there is the possibility we, uh, we continue to see 
uh, feed use for wheat and some of that corn uh, being kind of backed off there. Right, and certainly uh, feed usage of corn has been kind of one of the stronger items on the balance sheet. You know, we've seen export sales struggle. Uh, in our opinion, ethanol right now or, or throughout the marketing year up to this point has struggled as well. So that feed number has been really helping uh, those corn bowls out here throughout the marketing year. We'll keep you posted on developments there in the cash corn wheat spread here as we approach next Thursday's uh, quarterly grain stocks report here on Grain TV. But Cody, right now, kind of in general, what, um, what are you seeing in the cash market right now? What are some things that producers out there uh, should kind of be looking for right now? Well, I think there are some opportunities out in the cash market, and in particular, ethanol. You know, ethanol has been really kind of a sleeper this entire year, mm -hmm. hasn't really produced a whole lot relative to what the USDA was forecasting right. and relative to what we'd expect to see in, uh, when we look at years past. And and a lot of the times when we were looking at the forward curve for these ethanol plants, we would see a very strong spot bid and a very weak uh, forward forward bids. Right. And what we've noticed here in the last month, really, actually from March to, uh, to March 18th, March 1st to March 18th, we've actually seen a strong improvement in that June and July bid from ethanol plants. This uh, chart, what you're looking at here, is the average forward curve uh, for U.S. ethanol plants, and yellow was March, uh, March 18th, uh, and then uh, blue is March 1st. So what you're seeing is a very strong improvement in June and July, and, and I think there really are some diamonds in the rough out there, some ethanol plants that are actually offering a significant carry to be able to deliver ju uh, June and July uh, corn uh, to their plants, and I think that's what you guys need to be looking at. If you're making sales, keep an eye on those ethanol plants. I know you haven't been really looking at June and July bids in the past, right. uh, just they haven't been there, but we are seeing a pickup, so there might be an opportunity out there, and it's up to you guys to find them. Yeah, certainly. If you guys need any help with that, feel free to give us a call here at the office. Our number is 877 Four seven two four six zero seven, and we'd be happy to talk about uh, kind of what marketing opportunities exist within 200 miles of your uh, specific farm location out there. But you know, kind of sticking here to ethanol, Cody. Just just within the last week here, we've seen the ethanol crush margin pick up quite a bit. Right now, we see it sitting about a dollar ninety per bushel. Um, so certainly, that's very good to see in terms of corn going to ethanol production here. Uh, you know, in our mind, if you've been watching t or Grain TV, you know that uh, right now our models indicate that ethanol production is about 100 million bushels behind, uh, or excuse me, corn going to ethanol production is about 100 million bushels behind pace to meet USDA expectations. So certainly, uh, a larger or, or more profitable crush margin is good for production here moving forward. Now, this won't necessarily impact the numbers we'll be getting. From EIA, but certainly next Wednesday uh, we'd expect to see a little bit of a pickup in production. Ultimately, that's good for the price of corn here moving forward. So we're going to keep you posted on that here on Grain TV. But in general, Cody, I think that kind of wraps up the action that we saw today in the grain market. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys, here on Grain TV. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow for the EIA Ethanol Production Report.